Hey guys, it's Sebastian from Asebi, and today we are going to talk about the Chase Luxury Hotel and Resorts Collection. I'm probably going to call it the Luxury Collection for the purpose of this video. In case you don't know what that is, it is a platform where you can book online in order to get free perks when you make that stay. These benefits can include breakfast, include credits towards dining or towards a spa, and one of the main reasons why I really want to look at this is because for American Express, they do have a similar benefits, but they recently made some pretty big changes for Las Vegas. In the past, the MX FHR program had a bunch of credits for dining, but they moved all of those credits into spa credits, and for me, that's not really as valuable, it's less tangible. As a starting point, you can access this yourself by going to the website and then using the first six numbers from your credit card. It doesn't seem to matter what type of Chase credit card it is, as long as it's a Chase card. I tried both a Freedom card as well as a CSR number, and both of them seem to work fine. Searching is pretty straightforward, so I'm not going to walk through that, but you can pretty much go down the list and look at the different hotels to see what the different perks are, as well as the price. For the purpose of this video, I ended up looking at the prices for Friday, so the 4th of January, just because I find that sometimes prices are a bit lower if you are going last minute, assuming there's no conference. If there's a conference, pricing in Vegas is always going to be expensive. Ended up comparing the prices for the luxury collection with Google, so there are going to be some comparisons, but I wouldn't really put too much weight here just because prices do change, inventory does play a role here, for the prices that you see, they are based off the same room. But again, pricing is going to be different. Going down the list alphabetically, we first have Aria, which is $129 for both platforms. Also, if you want to see this chart, you can go to the blog post down below. That way you can kind of look at this if you want to skim read. So given that the pricing is pretty similar, you do want to use a luxury hotel collection just because you are going to get perks. Here we are going to get continental breakfast for two, either at the buffet, Aria Cafe, or in-room dining up to $30 per person per day. In addition to this, you're going to get a $100 food and beverage credit that you can use at a bunch of different places. You get guaranteed late checkout until 4 p.m., and then depending on how busy it is and the occupancy, you can get a one-category upgrade from a deluxe to a deluxe city. Another your mileage may vary thing is going to be early check-in at 12 noon. So this example would be a pretty good one where you would want to use a luxury collection because there's not really any disadvantage. Oftentimes, if you go through a lot of the ones on Google, you actually are going to be lower priority for a lot of different things. So oftentimes they want you to book either directly or through one of these special, I guess, higher end travel agencies because of these perks. If you are going through this process yourself, obviously pricing is going to be different every time you go. I'd recommend spending the 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, however long you're going to take, looking at prices on a few different platforms just to make sure you're getting a good deal. Something I say a lot is that this is something you can do while watching YouTube, while watching Netflix, so just do it. It's very minimal efforts. Moving on to Bellagio, we do see a bit of a price difference, but depending on how you value the perks, it might still make sense. If you have a normal room, you're going to get full breakfast for up to two guests at a bunch of different restaurants. If you have a suite, then you're going to get breakfast for up to four guests. The credit here is a bit more interesting just because you do have more choices. Either you can get four spa facility passes or you can get $100 beverage and food credits. Your mileage may vary for upgrades as well as early check-in and late checkouts. For this property, for this specific date, then you do run into an interesting problem because on one hand, you're paying a higher fee but you are getting benefits. So it really depends on how you value those benefits. For me, if I'm going to eat at the buffet anyways, then this makes sense because even though I'm paying something like $50 more, I'm getting $100 benefits towards that buffet. That's ignoring the breakfast as well as the potential upgrades and late checkout and early check-in. This is just an example, but again, one that really illustrates why you might want to pay a bit more sometimes to get more perks. For Caesars, the price difference looks like it's a bit higher. 205 versus 139. You get breakfast for two people, maximum up to $20 per person per day. You get guaranteed VIP check-in, and you might get upgrades in early check-in and late checkouts. Assuming you value the breakfast at its maximum value of $40, this one is one where it doesn't make sense just because you're paying more than $40 to get this benefit, but you're not really getting more value, at least to me. If you value upgrades, again, that might be a bit different, but I probably wouldn't use the program here. Delano is one that a lot of people who previously used the Amex one really liked just because the pricing was typically very cheap. 
Pricing looks pretty consistent for the Friday dates, and you get continental breakfast for two people, up to $30 in value per guest. You also get a $100 beverage credit, and I did skip a few other benefits like the Wi-Fi ones, just because I don't really think they're worth mentioning. I think for Delano, there's also another benefit where they greet you and stuff, but again, I didn't even bother putting that into the chart because that's not really that quantifiable to me at least, and not really that valuable. Mandalay Bay is a pretty good option if you're looking for a more economic stay. Rates for Friday are $69 for both platforms. You're going to get continental breakfast up to $25 in value, as well as $100 beverage credits. This is going to be one that's pretty interesting if you are someone who wants to save money, and if you like the food at Mandalay Bay just because you're paying less than $100 and you're getting a $100 credit as well as breakfast. So depending on how you value those perks, if you were going to eat there anyways, then you could consider this a free stay. Yes, there are resort fees and stuff, but you have resort fees across all of the Vegas hotels. All in, you might be paying $110, but you're getting the $100 food credit as well as breakfast for two people. Upgrades, early check-in, and late check-out are maybes. For MGM Grand, we have Continental Breakfast as well as $100 food and beverage credits. For Park MGM that just opens, you have a full breakfast for two people up to $30 per person as well as a $50 food and beverage credits. I'm not sure if the price is going to stay this low for Park MGM, but again, it might be worth a visit if you do want to see a new property. I doubt this is going to apply to most people, but if you want to do Skylofts, it's about $1,200. You get Continental Breakfast for two per master bedroom. You also get $100 food and beverage credits. For Cosmo, you are going to get free breakfast buffet at Wicked Spoon, and then a $50 spa credit, and a $50 food and beverage credits. Wicked Spoon is pretty much always a stop for Vegas for me, just because they do have bone marrow, so if you are someone who's interested in that, this might be a good choice. If you do have Marriott status as well, you can skip the line, and you can also get a discount there. For the Palazzo, you're going to get a $65 breakfast credits. This one is a bit interesting because you're not getting any other food and beverage credit. You do get a signature champagne in suites once per stay. Signature at MGM is going to be breakfast for two up to $20 per person and a $100 food and beverage credit. Venetian is going to be a $65 daily credit as well as champagne. The Trump Hotel is going to be breakfast for two as well as a welcome amenity of wine, water, and fruits. Waldorf Astoria is going to be continental breakfast for two as well as $100 spa credits per room per stay. For Wynn and Encore, it is a bit interesting just because it seems like they grouped both of them together. You are going to get breakfast for two up to $30 per person. You're also going to get a $50 spa as well as a $50 food and beverage credits. If I had to do a stay for this Friday, I'd probably pick between Aria as well as Park MGM, mostly depending on what I'm looking for. Aria because I do like their buffet, so that works out pretty well. And for Park MGM, mostly because it's a new property that opened, I think, five days ago. On kind of a side note, if you are someone who wants to watch more of our travel stuff, head over to Sebi Fung where we have the travel videos, and then Mandy Roams also has travel videos and credit card videos. I'm pretty sure most people here have Chase cards, but if you are someone who doesn't and you want to learn more about them, feel free to use the links on our sites or the links in the description down below. Hopefully that was helpful, and my question for you guys is when you go to Vegas, which of these hotels do you typically stay at? And given this perk, given perks like this, which one would you otherwise stay at now? So if you previously stayed at Cosmo, would you now stay at Aria, or how would you think about it? Let me in the community know down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps us out. If you know anyone else who'd benefit from what we just talked about, feel free to share this video with them, because it's probably going to help them out. But otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Today we are going to review Jet Suite X.